most of you that watch this are more serious collectors are not just accumulating junk. What you need to do is check your albums for these key key modern dates where you're not going to find these coins in choice to gem BU raw for face value or a few bucks because they don't exist. Those of you who have gray sheets to figure out what wholesale is on the stuff from 1982 and 1983, go to the column for original rolls, go to the pages for original rolls and divide by how many coins are in that roll. For example, if you looked at 1982p nickels, divide that by 40 and you have your wholesale cost of one MS63 nickel. Do the same for quarters, do the same for half dollars. These are tough coins and if you have been accumulating a nice set of uncirculated coins, there's chances are you don't have an uncirculated coin in these slots. It's because most people that fill those slots, they fill it with an AU or worse specimen. And that's why the prices are so far out of line with other dates from that era. The reason is simple. 40 couple years ago, not only did the Mint not produce Mint sets for 1982 and 1983, no one, I mean no one, thought to put those original rolls away. There are exceptions. Half dollar rolls are out there. Nickel, dimes, and quarter rolls are very hard to come by. If you find a half a roll or a roll of those, I'd be a buyer. Because I have to pick these off at shows out of dealers' boxes or have bought a complete set of the common stuff and found that I got and pulled those four dates out of the slots to put into two by twos or I have to reach out to my source in upstate New York who doesn't wholesale anything because he knows how tough they are. So, you know, you get sticker shock. Hey, the prices have come down over the years on some of these, but they're not cheap. That's the 1982 P and D. I have most of these. I don't have every single one. Um, I've got multiples of some in some denominations in the den various denominations. Now, in the case of 1979S Type 1 filled and Type 2 Clear S proofs, most people can get the variety correct because the Type 1 proof of 79 looks like a volcano. It looks like a blob. The Type 2 of 1979 is a Clear S. Where the confusion lies, and it's gotten better over the years because the Red Book used to call the 1981 filled and clear, and that is not, that's a misnomer. In 1981, the mint marks are all clear. The Type 1 is pretty much a symmetrical S, and the Type 2 is an elongated S with bulbs sometimes on the ends of the S and a flat serif on the top. So what, what really happens, in 1979, you have a blob Type 1, you have a clear Type 2. When you got to 1981, did I say 1979? When you got to 1981, what was the Type 2 mint mark of 79 becomes the Type 1 more common mint mark of 1981, and they changed the shape of the mint mark late in the year to come up with a Type 2. They're not that expensive, but what you don't want is to have the wrong coin in the wrong slot in your album. Now, the sad part is Dansko and the major album manufacturers don't even recognize the Type 2 1981 coins in several of the denominations, and that's ridiculous because it's a major, major variety that everybody needs to have to have a complete set. Some of the other major varieties that the Red Book recognizes off the top of my head would be the 1982 no initials, no FG, Kennedy half dollar. And again, to find that in BU or better is not so easy. You can find them in circulation if that's all you want, but uh, that's a tougher coin. And then in 1979, a lot of people are aware of the 1979P having a common far date normal rim variety. And then the desirable coin is the near date wide rim variety. And there is a slot in your album for that one. I have five or six of those ranging in grades from XFAU all the way up to about an MS64. Those coins are hampered by weak, weak strikes and bag marks. So unless you're buying slabs, to find a raw one in nice BU shape is not easy and they're not cheap. So there's a little rundown on what I'm trying to do with this thread. Um, of course, I stock all the common stuff, but these are the holes that more people need to fill. 
because you you know you can't cut up a mint set from 1982 and get what you need. I do have one each of the souvenir sets. Now, in 1982 and 83, the mint gift shops sold the souvenir sets in a light blue envelope for Philadelphia and a navy blue envelope for Denver. There was also aftermarket sets that companies put out because they realized there wasn't any mint sets. Those are not nearly as desirable as the souvenir gift shop sets. And when I get my hands on those, I generally will cut them up because I need the singles. So I pretty much covered all. Oh, and last but not least, the 1981 all Type 2 proof set is extremely scarce. I've owned six in my life. And I've seen those on eBay over the years, and the sellers almost always don't know what they're doing. They're telling you a clear-ass Type 2 proof set of 81, and it's not what it's supposed to be. It's a common-ass Type 1 proof set of 81, or it has a few Type 2 coins, but not all six Type 2 coins. I did a study at one time to try to figure out why you'll find 1981 proof sets that might have the nickel, the dime, and the quarter as Type 2, and then the penny, the half dollar, and the Susan B. Anthony as Type 1, and, other, and all sorts of combinations. And all I could figure out, based on people who'd studied that stuff, is the mint mark itself for the Type 1 and Type 2 proof in 1981 was changed at different times near the end of the year so it was pretty almost random what went into the proof set and uh yeah a type 2 proof set in 1981 all type 2 is very very uncommon the 1979 all type 2 clear ass proof set i have one of those and they're not that scarce but if you need one i do have one so a lot of this stuff you see on this thread i have in stock a few i don't if you need it i'll give you a price i can get it from my source but again it, the you're not you, these aren't going to be cheap you know i try to get somewhere near the gray sheet but in these cases retail is retail because i know how hard they are to find and and if you can buy some of these at gray sheet god bless you go for it if you can find them on ebay just be careful because you may be thinking you're getting a good deal on a bu or better coin from those 82 and 83 dates and what you're really getting is an au slider or worse that's worth face value all right, there's the explanation of what I'm trying to do with this thread as I have a little more time now for coins since I've cut back my delivery schedule now that summer's, the unofficial summer is over. Thanks for watching and have a good evening.